Today I'm going to show you how I went about recording a podcast with multiple cameras, multiple microphones, and all the gear required, as well as how to set it up. Let's get into it. Now I'm using my dining room for this particular podcast and we shoot it at night so there's not lots of unnecessary daylight coming through. We can actually control that with the lamps and I'll get into that in a little bit. But today I just thought I'd show you the room that I use and how you can do it in pretty much any room irrespective of where you live. There's always a space hopefully for doing this kind of thing. So I'm going to start with the audio gear. And then we'll go over to the video gear and I'll leave all the time codes and links to the gear that I use in the description below. This is the Rode Procaster. I love the sound of this. And what I also really like about it is if you're standing to the side of it and talking into it, it's not going to pick up much at all. It only picks up whatever's coming directly in front of it. And that's both a pro and a con depending on your mic technique. And if you're sitting there and you turn your head and you start talking this way, it's not going to pick up much of that sound. Or if you're facing the other way, you really have to be talking into it to get the full benefit of it. Now there's one downside of this particular mic. If you don't have a windshield or a pop filter or anything like that, it, you can't just talk straight into it. You get lots of plosives. You would need to sort of EQ, it, EQ that out before the fact or, or after. But that means any of those P and B words, if you're right up on the grill talking, you're gonna hear these booms coming through the microphone. So just use one of these, you can get these for next to nothing. All right, over to the Rode Pod Mic. This is a new microphone from Rode. It's kind of like a more affordable version of the Procaster. It doesn't mean that it's crap or anything like that. It kind of has a similar kind of vibe to an SM7B from Shaw, one of those ones you'd see on something like the Joe Rogan podcast, for example, in terms of its configuration, it comes with this little mount. One of the things it doesn't come, come with though is any type of protective cover. You just get the box. So when you're not using it, it goes back in the box. Kind of sucks they didn't include some sort of special vinyl cover you could just cover it up with. But anyway, that's no big deal. One of the great things about this mic over the Procaster, and one of the things I've noticed is you can talk a lot more into it than the Procaster without getting as much of that plosive. It still happens. I'll be doing a shootout between both of those microphones coming up. So if you're interested in that, definitely stick around and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And lastly, we have a large diaphragm condenser microphone. This is the Rode NT1. I love the sound of this. This is my favorite vocal recording mic of all time. I have a number of other Rode microphones as well as Audio-Technica, as you can see down the back there. But this one is by far my favorite. I think it sounds great. If you're after a condenser microphone for doing a podcast, this would definitely be the top of my list. And it also comes with the grill and the shock mount and all that kind of stuff as well. Just remember though, these mics do pick up more ambient noise than some of these other ones over here like the Rode Procaster and the Pod Mic. So in terms of microphone stands and boom arms, I don't use anything flash. These are about like 15 or 20 bucks or somewhere around there. And I got those online and they definitely do the trick. This means you can essentially move the arm up and down. Being that they're less expensive ones, they can kind of creak a little bit if you pull the springs this way. You might be able to hear that, I'm not too sure. It's pretty quiet actually, it's not too bad for the price that you pay. Or you could essentially use something like this, which is more of just like a tabletop stand. I actually use these to record electric guitar microphone, uh, electric guitar amplifiers and all that kind of stuff with mics. So these work really, really well and you can adjust the height of them slightly as well. But one of the downsides of these particular stands over the other ones is if you tap the table, it will kind of come through the actual uh, sort of stand into the mic a little bit more than these. These are way better for sort of isolating the microphone and you can also move them a lot further around in every direction, which I think is a little bit better, but I didn't have three of them. So I used what I had and that's what it's all about. All the cables I use are XLR cables. None of these are high end either. I'll leave some links to the ones that I use in the description and these will definitely work fine. I've had these for a little while now had no problems with them at all. You wanna make sure you're getting the ones that have the three little holes in them as well on both ends. This is the female side which plugs into the microphone. The male side actually has the pins that you can actually see. 
Recording a podcast, there's lots of little things that you need to know that a lot of people don't tell you. So I'm gonna cover this right now. When I record a podcast, I like to make sure I don't have to have a computer hooked up and then assigning all the tracks. It's just a big waste of time. This is a standalone recorder. It records via an SD card and you get up to eight microphone inputs at any one time. It does have its limitations though. As you can see on the front here, it says phantom power on and off. That's only for channels five and six, which means you only get two channels that you can use the large diaphragm condenser microphones like this or this. So you can only have two of them at any one time. So that's kind of limiting. But the cool thing is a lot of the podcast microphones are dynamic microphones and you don't actually need to have that on. But the other limitation, and this is why I wanted to make this video, and it's something that I learned over the last couple of years, is the fact that if you're using the Rode Procast or the Shure SM7B, the Pod mic, or any of those other microphones, you'll actually need something to boost the gain of the microphone signal before you get it into here. Now, there's some options like the Cloud Lifter. It's a popular solution. Or you can buy a standalone mixer. That will do the job as well. But for me, space saving and all that kind of stuff, the Behringer Ultra Gain Pro was definitely the way to go. This is a two channel valve. It says valve or tube uh, preamp for mics. It also has some EQ functionality as well. I did a full review of this. If you wanna find out more about it, I'll leave some links in the cards. But essentially this will take the signal of your low output dynamic podcast microphones and make them much louder so you can actually run the gain on the desk all the way down. Now, if I didn't have that preamp, I would have to run the gain pretty much all the way up and it would sound nowhere near as good as having this preamp solution. So I would go for a preamp over the cloud lifter. I'm not just saying that because I've bought it. I've spoken to a lot of people about it and I think not everybody's satisfied with the cloud lifters. So you might be saying, hey Shane, what about the headphones? How do I hook up headphones to this particular unit? One of the great things about the R16, not only can you hook it up to studio monitors via these two outputs, it also has a headphone output as well with an independent volume control on there also. Coming out of this, we're going into the Behringer Micro Amp. And now they've changed design on these, but this is a four headphone mixer. So thanks to the stereo plug that I've got going out of the actual Zoom R16, I'll leave some details about what that actually is in the description as well. I'm then going into this and this will power all of the headphones and we'll all have our independent uh, volume control. Now, for the sake of the podcast, I hooked this up, but no one wanted to wear headphones and I double checked the sound and all that kind of stuff and we decided not to wear headphones, but I have this as an option and this is what I tested all of the microphones with just to make sure everyone was happy with their sound. Then we figured we didn't actually need it because we were sitting right next to each other. Let's talk a little bit now about the video setup, including which cameras I use, which lenses I use, and also how to get the best angle. So for me, I'm actually shooting this video with my Panasonic GH5, and I've got a Leica 15 millimeter F1.7 lens. It's maybe not the most perfect lens for a podcast, but I'll get into what I think is the best option and where, where I think you could save a few bucks. So if you're gonna do a podcast and you actually wanna invest some money in good camera equipment, Get a couple of these Panasonic G85s. Right now, the new G95 has been out. If you can afford that, buy that one. But the G85, you should be able to get for an absolute deal. And my suggestion is if you have a little bit of space, get one of these 25 millimeter F1.7 lenses. I think the results we got shooting the podcast in this room were fantastic. You do need a little bit of, bit of space between the camera and the subject, but it's just sharp and it's clear and it kind of blurs the background out a little bit as well which makes it less distracting if, you know, if the trees are sort of swaying in the background, you get a very similar effect to what you're seeing in the background of this particular shot right now, how it's not quite in focus. One of the downsides about buying any type of mirrorless camera or DSLR is the fact that they don't come with a power supply. They only come with one battery and one battery won't last you that long, maybe an hour or so, depending on the type of camera that you buy, maybe a little longer if you buy a GH5, but I would highly suggest buying one of these, you can get these third-party AC power supplies and dummy batteries, which just simply plug into the bottom of the camera, allowing the camera to record unless your power goes out, but indefinitely, which is really, really cool. The reason I recommend these particular cameras over just about anything else is you can record indefinitely. Most cameras will shut off 
After about 30 minutes, they'll stop recording. So you have to start recording again, or maybe the camera can overheat. So the G85 doesn't have that problem. The GH5 doesn't have that problem. If you're looking at the Panasonic G7, it will shut off after 30 minutes. So now if you decide on getting a Panasonic G85, GH5 or G95 or any of these particular cameras, definitely get some of these, the SanDisk Extreme Pros. These are an absolute steal online as well right now as they've almost been superseded, but these will do the job perfectly. And it means they're not gonna split the files every four gig if you go for one of the cameras that I've listed. So you get one big file up to 96 gigabytes or more than the capacity of the 64 for next to nothing. These are really dirt cheap. I actually use a couple of 128s, but they're actually in my computer right now as well. So yeah, these are definitely the right sort of, uh, you know, SD cards for the job. So in terms of camera angles, I was sitting on that microphone that you're looking at right now, the Rode Procaster. I had a camera angle right where I was standing facing me that way. And that's because I had two other people either side pretty much looking at each other and it made it sort of the most coherent when if I was pointing left or right, you knew exactly if I was pointing this way or if I was pointing this way. I also had my friend, Dr. Rick, using this particular microphone and notice the, where the boom arm is positioned right here. It's actually off to the right of screen. And if you look at the one down the end of the table, it's actually facing the other way. I did this with, for a very particular purpose, camera angles. So we're gonna talk about how to get everybody in frame and this should be a bit of fun and also hopefully helpful. Because of the position of the arm, I could get an easy shot on Ryan who was sitting in this particular chair and the boom arm was kind of out of the way and it was also out of the way of shot this way on the most part, I think you could just see it, but it wasn't distracting or anything like that. I was up a little bit closer. So you probably just see the edge of it, but it also wasn't in his field of view for looking at Rick, because my friend Rick was sitting in this chair and I had the camera angle, something similar to this. I'll overlay some B-roll on screen so you can see how it actually looks, but the results were really, really cool. And it also gave him some flexibility of being able to move the microphone, having this type of arm stand or boom arm stand anyway. So I had the sort of the pleb one, which you couldn't move a whole lot, but I was the shortest, so it didn't matter. One shot to think about as well, if you've got an extra camera spare, is the room shot. So having everybody in shot. Now, if you're using a micro four thirds camera like I am, this is a 15 millimeter lens. It would be a great lens for that. I would almost opt for a zoom lens, like a 12 to 60 kit lens or something like that. So you can get the exact width that you need in the shot. So you can get a really wide angle or you can actually zoom it in and get something that works. But yeah, think about this angle, try to get something that works, try to keep the horizon fairly steady if you can, which is another one of my problems. <laughs> but yeah, this shot will definitely help, especially if you need to edit the video or if everybody starts laughing or whatever at one particular time, it's a really cool shot to have. Once the podcast was completed, I took the audio out of this via the SD card slot on the side and I took it into my computer that I do all of my audio editing on. What you're looking at right now is each section of the podcast broken up into three different sections because we, we did take a break between each particular topic. Now you might notice that it looks like some stuff is spiking all the way up to the end. I've actually got a limiter on there. The way that I like to use this, I don't like to gate the audio and I feel like Sometimes when you add a gate, it's really distracting. So if we look at the controls here, I've actually got my channel down the most. Rick's is slightly above mine and Ryan's is up even further. He was using the condenser microphone and he's a softly spoken guy. And he's also sitting back further from the mic. So I kind of cranked his up a little bit extra as well. And I also adjusted the track volume to kind of peak at the same spot on each track. So I know that at our most loud point, we're all gonna be the same. I also ran a plugin on the actual master bus of the mix down. I used Isotope Ozone 4, and I also used the limiter to make sure that there weren't any bits that were actually spiking or whatever. Isotope is just a great mastering tool and just something that makes everything sound better. One of my favorite presets is four band master warm mids, and then I customize that to my liking. Now in terms of the limiter, all I use is the Waves L1 limiter stereo. I've had this forever. And all I do is bring the out ceiling down to minus 0.2, just to make sure nothing clips in case it does within the Isotope software.
Now, if you're on a budget and you don't need the camera equipment and you just want a good audio setup, check out my video up in the cards here. It's probably the best setup for under hundred US dollars you can get. I'll also leave a link in the description so you can check that video out as well. One thing to take note of, anytime you're in front of the camera or you're setting up cameras for other people to be in front of, think about this whole rule of thirds. Notice that I'm kind of towards one side of the screen. That means if I'm looking to someone that's over here, it makes sense if you can mirror that image coming back. So if they're talking to you, you wanna kind of capture you on this side of the screen looking this way. And that will create that dynamic where people are actually looking at each other. And if you've got someone in the center, just put them dead center looking this way. Now that's not a necessity. A lot of podcasts, even popular podcasts don't do that either. But if you have a situation like I do where there's three people and you need to get the best sort of you know, angles on people, try to shoot from the sides. That way it will actually look like they're looking across the table at whoever's on the other side or in the center. And it's very obvious which way they're turning. Thanks for watching guys. My name's Shane. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. All the links will be down in the description to B&H. There are affiliate links as well. If this video was helpful, I appreciate you shopping there. It won't cost you any more. So in terms of this particular setup in this room, I can do it in my dining room, which means anyone can do it in a lounge room, you know, and even in a kitchen if need be, or wherever, it doesn't really matter. If you've got space to record a podcast with cameras and also with audio, then you're set. And depending on your situation, like I said, if you're in a really echoey room or you've got a lot of loud neighbors, don't buy a condenser microphone. You can get away with them if you're using them you know, later in the evening when it's not as loud. If you've got a lot of loud trucks going by and all that kind of stuff and you can hear it in your house, the microphone will hear it as well. So just make sure of that. Go for a dynamic microphone. My suggestions would be the pod mic or the Rode Procaster. Right as I said that, a whole lot of loud birds just went by and I'm using a shirt microphone for this you probably would hear them still screaming in the background. So they're the kind of ambient noise things that you sort of have no control over, but the birds are cool, so I can't complain. <laughs> now, if you have any specific question about the video gear, the audio gear, how I set it up, how I edit it, all that kind of thing, please let me know. It's a huge learning curve if you're getting into this, but once you get a couple of things that I've recommended, especially the cameras, if you're going for the cameras, get the G85s, and get some power supplies online that will work with them and you, you can just record as big as the SD card is that you buy. It's a much better thing than going for some brands which time out after 30 minutes or overheat even sooner. The Panasonic Micro Four Thirds system, in my opinion, the best video format for this type of stuff where you wanna do a podcast and forget the cameras even on it and know you're not gonna have any problems with them. So get the G85, the G95 or the GH5 if you wanna spend a little bit more. You can also go for the GH5S, probably overkill for most people. Thanks again for watching folks. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. Click that little notification bell. I have more videos coming up on a weekly basis. Thanks again, catch you soon. See ya.